Okay, so today, for today's video, what I'm going to be doing is sort of like a storytelling or like a, I don't know, gossipy type video. So, um, I love watching the show The People's Court. There are plenty of court shows now. But my favorite is The People's Court. I remember it always being on when I was a little kid. Let me see. I'm not sure if you can see this here. This is a picture of the courtroom. There we have Judge Marilyn Millian and the bailiff, um, Douglas. So what I have done is I just picked um, two cases and I kind of just wrote down some notes and I'm just going to go over each case and just um, talk a little about what happened in each one. And I decided to print out just some screenshots of the episodes. So I'll just sort of flip through some of the pictures. I decided to print them out like this to sort of look like courtroom drawings, which I think is another very interesting topic that I want to do a video about. But for now, I'm going to tell the story of these two cases. So we are going to take a look at this one first. Okay. So this one is a case called, I believe they titled it, um, The Neighbor's Fire, I'm pretty sure, or Your Neighbor's Fire. I think it's The Neighbor's Fire. So this here, this woman is the plaintiff. So she is the one who has brought the case to court. She is the one suing the defendant. And I believe there is the defendant on this page. And so, flipping back here, the woman here, she had lived in an apartment complex that was owned by the defendant's parents. He is there representing them today. So, um, what had happened was, um, the woman was not home, from what I remember, but there was a fire that started in her neighbor's apartment. And um, her car happened to be parked outside in the parking lot, right underneath of the window um, of the apartment that was on fire. And so, of course, the uh, fire department was called, and they came out and extinguished the fire. But, of course, in the process of um, the fire department putting out the fire, uh, 
large mess was made and you know they have to break windows and lots of debris falls all over the place so in that process her car that was parked under the window happened to get some uh, damage done to it also oh, a lot of uh, debris that had landed on it and um, here she's explaining to Judge Millian. And so, um, you know, no one was hurt. And um, they had found out um, that the fire had started because her neighbor um, wasn't home either. He had left left the stove turned on when he left the house. So, now, the plaintiff is, let me go back to that page, the plaintiff, here, she was suing the defendant for um, over $3,000 which I'm assuming is the total amount of the the cost of fixing all of the damage to her car. And she explains that at the time of the incident, um, they were discussing back and forth, uh, the, the defendant and her, about how to go about taking care of her car. At first, she had planned on going through her car insurance, and they also discussed going through the insurance of the landlord. Uh, I guess it's some type of home insurance. And now, of course, no one ever wants to really use their insurance, only because it can, when you make a claim on your insurance for some type of accident, it can make the monthly cost of your insurance go up, and no one wants to do that. So, the landlords had gone down and taken a look at her car to see how much damage was done. And here, I believe, the defendant is giving the bailiff, Douglas, some pictures for Judge Millian to look at. Pictures of the plaintiff's car. And the defendant feels that there is very minimal damage. They had offered to give the plaintiff, I think they said $400, to repair the car. And I guess she felt that that wasn't enough. Um, so Judge Millian was also taking a look at the pictures. And she said it didn't look like there was really too much damage. But you could see there was some, you know, scratches and dents, things like that. Um, so, the defendant really decided that they, at some point, decided that they didn't want to make a claim with the insurance. And then, after some time, decided that um, the amount that the plaintiff was asking for was just too much. And so, they just really stopped trying to discuss with each other how to get her car taken care of because there was no agreement on how much 
it would cost. So in the end, nothing happened. I'm not sure if she got her car fixed or not yet. Um, let's see what's on this page. So here's a picture of Judge Millian. Now she has to decide who should pay for the score because it did get damaged and the plaintiff deserves to have her car fixed. So the judge asks the plaintiff, um, you know, what is it that makes what happened the fault of the defendant? Um, she says, you know, she didn't, or the plaint the defendant didn't cause the fire, didn't cause any damage to the woman's car, so she's trying to understand why the plaintiff is suing the landlord. And you can see she was trying to really think about it because, um, you know, obviously she must feel like, well, it's not her fault. And she feels that she's explaining that, first of all, um, she feels that maybe they could have done something about the other tenant who caused the fire. She mentioned that um, she was told by someone that he did start fires in the past, and um, subsequently they did make that other tenant move out after this fire, I believe. Um, but there was no proof of that, that he had started previous fires, but in her opinion, she felt that at the time, since they decided they would help her take care of it, and they sort of came to this agreement that insurance would not be used, and then they just changed their mind and said, that they didn't feel that the car needed that much work. They just never ended up paying anything because they couldn't agree on an amount. She says, well then, if I had known that, that that was going to happen, I would have just gone through my car insurance. So at that point, the judge said, well, let's find out if you can still make a claim. I think it happened a few years before they actually came to court. She said, let's find out if it's too late and you can try and make a claim now. So they did that during the uh, case uh, here. And it came to be known that the woman could still make a claim with her car insurance, but I think there was going to be like a $500 deductible, which means you have to pay $500 towards the repairs first, and then if it costs more than that, then the insurance will pay the balance. So I'm not sure if that's what she ended up doing, but... In the end, the judge decided that the defendant was not responsible to pay for the damages to her car. That who would be more responsible would be the other tenant who started the fire. So the judgment was for the defendant. Hopefully she got her car fixed, but it is, uh, those kinds of things happen a lot where, you know, someone has something done to them that, um, you know, the woman felt like, you know, this thing happened to her, she was wronged in some way, and 
I'm sure she didn't feel like she should have to pay anything at all. Um, which, you know, I agree with, but uh, that's the way insurance works. Um, and it was good that she was still able to make a claim, I think. So, that was the first case. And now we can talk about the next one. Okay. Oh. So, the next case here. In this case, this here is the plaintiff. He is the one suing the defendant here. So what happens in this case? Now they are in New York. They live uh, close to each other. Um, so, and I guess everyone must park uh, on the street in their neighborhood. So I guess it's a little, you know, people have to drive around looking for somewhere to park. So the defendant here, he was parked on the street and he was getting ready to leave. He had just gotten in his car and he was doing a few things, you know, looking at his phone, getting his things together. And while he was doing that, another car had pulled up and wanted to take his spot when he left. So he was just said, okay, well, just give me a few minutes. I just have to do a few things. I'll be pulling out in just a minute. So as he was doing whatever he was doing, his car started to smoke. And the car that was waiting for his spot had gotten his attention, said, hey, I see smoke coming out of your car. And it started uh, getting worse and worse. So, the defendant got out of his car, obviously. And it really actually started on fire. The fire was coming out of the hood of the car. And I believe the uh, fire department showed up, I'm pretty sure. And they helped to put out the fire. And in the meantime, after after the incident, he it was found that the car that was parked in front of his, which happened to be the defendant's, I mean, I'm sorry, the plaintiff's car, got damaged by the fire. So, the defendant wasn't sure who owned the car, so he says he waited around for maybe an hour and a half, waiting for someone to maybe come out, and then he would know who owns the car, and I believe that's what happened. Eventually, the plaintiff found out that his car had been damaged by the fire. He says it was Mother's Day, which really doesn't have any relevance in the case, but... So what had happened was he came out, he... They actually ended up going out to lunch together to talk about, um... him stating his case, telling the judge what had happened, and um, there's the fire. I see there's Judge Millian. She's just asking about, so what happened? Um, they ended up going out to lunch together, talking about the plan. How was this car going to get repaired? And, um, let's see. Okay, so 
they were very friendly with each other and um, I guess when it came down to it they decided that they would make a claim with the defendant's car insurance the one who whose car started on fire and just to show this is a picture I printed out of the now this was someone started or I think there was some surveillance video that was taken and the plaintiff was able to get a copy of some of the video so here you see the car really did start on fire I don't think they really ever knew what had caused the fire it was just some sort of electrical source maybe but it was just one of those things it was nothing that the defendant did so the defendants um, tried to make a claim with his car insurance and they actually well, they first said they would take care of it and then after some consideration they, the insurance company felt that it was not the fault of the defendant their um, insure, insured party um, they felt it wasn't his fault so they denied the claim and decided they were not going to pay for this damage so now that's why they are here um, because I guess that when the defendant was told by his insurance company that it wasn't his fault he felt free of the responsibility to pay for it so that's why they're here in court now the judge again she needs to ask the plaintiff why does he feel that it is the defendant's fault and that the defendant should pay for the damage to his car and so what the plaintiff says is that he feels it is his fault because he didn't do anything to stop the fire he claims that when the defendant got out of his car after it started fire that he left the car running and that made the fire worse and that's why there was so much damage done to his car and he's showing um, a part of the video here to the judge where he says look you can see that the headlights are still on after he gets out of the car which means that he left the car on and he made the situation worse so the judge is sort of not sure what to think about that and um, the defendant tells her my car stays on for about 40 seconds after I get out of the car and turn it off the lights stay on which is exactly what happens when you watch the video he gets out and um, the lights stay on for a short time and then they turn off on their own so I think she actually went and did a little research after he said that and she did find that that is true that that make and model car does stay on for that amount of time after you turn the car so and she also says well 
even if he had left the car running, really what else would anyone expect someone to do in that situation when your car starts on fire? Uh, you know, you sort of just jump to action. You don't really think, oh, let me do this, let me do that first. Some people do, but you can't blame someone if they didn't, um, you know, if they weren't able to think so clearly and logically when um, they're in that type of emergency situation. So she did consider it for a bit, um, but really didn't agree that that would have made any difference at all. So, um, in the end, the judge decides that the defendant is not responsible for what happened that day. It was just an accident, and um, she rules in his favor. Um, so, I'm sure the plaintiff was not very happy about that. I'm not sure if they mentioned anything about um, going through his own car insurance, but, you know, it's just one of those situations that happens a lot. Um, you know, something happens, it's not your fault, but you end up but um, I guess I do agree that it wasn't the defendant's fault either. So, those are the two cases I chose for today. I um, do want to do some more videos like this. I'm not sure if I want to do it in the same style. Probably yes. Some of them I actually wanted to, like, reenact the whole case, but we'll see. But I hope you enjoyed that. If you like it, let me know, and I'll find some more interesting cases to talk about. Thank you so much.